Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, released in 2007, was the Zelda series' first entry on the Nintendo DS. Following the events of Wind Waker, Link is tasked with exploring islands in a new region of the Great Sea in order to rescue his friend Tetra. In the second half of the game, Link comes across the Isle of Frost, home to the Inuki tribe, and an interesting type of puzzle that has not been seen in any other Zelda game. The Mayor Inuki informs Link that a member of the rival Yuk tribe has kidnapped one of the Inuki and taken their place in disguise. Link must talk to the villagers and deduce which one is the imposter, armed only with the knowledge that an Inuki will always tell the truth and a Yuk will always lie. This puzzle is an example of a Knights and Knaves problem. Knights, like the Inuki, will always tell the truth, and Knaves, like the Yuk, will always lie. As you can see, asking a Knight or a Knave their identity is useless because they will both claim to be Knights. While many Knights and Knaves problems can be solved by common sense, some more elaborate problems can be difficult to reason through without careful organization. Let's take a look at a method for deducing the truth and finding the imposter. We'll start simple. Let's say we know two Islanders, Patrick and Quinn. Patrick says, we are both knights, while Quinn says, Patrick is a knave. First, we'll declare a Boolean variable for each Islander. When we say a variable is Boolean, we simply mean it can represent one of two values, either true or false. We'll let the variable P represent the statement, Patrick is a knight, and we'll let the variable Q represent, Quinn is a knight. At the moment, we don't know whether P or Q represent true or false statements, but we'll discover that shortly. Next, we will write out statements each islander makes in logical form. Patrick says we are both knights. In other words, he's claiming P and Q. Both P and Q are true. Quinn says Patrick is a knave. In other words, he is negating P. So we will write not P. The key here is to notice that the Boolean value for an islander's identity must be identical to the Boolean value for any statements the Islander makes. For example, if P is true and Patrick is a knight, then whatever Patrick says must be true as well. On the other hand, if P is false, Patrick is a knave, and whatever Patrick says must be false. Next, we write out a truth table, a table summarizing every possible combination of knight and knave, so that we can check the validity of each Islander's statements against their identity. In the first column, we have the statement P, Patrick is a knight, and in the second column we have the statement Q, Quinn is a knight. In total, there are four different combinations of knight and knave that are possible. In order for all of the variables and statements to be consistent, the blue columns must agree with each other, and the orange columns must agree with each other. We want the blue columns to agree with each other, because this tells us that Patrick's identity as a knight or a knave is logically consistent with the statement he makes. Same goes for the orange columns. Whether Quinn is a knight or a knave, his statements must be logically consistent with his identity. As you can see, the only possibility is in the third row. Patrick is lying and Quinn is telling the truth. All of the other options will contradict each other in some way, and they are not possible. Let's take a look at another example. Say we meet two other islanders, Jen and Kim. Jen says, we are both knights, while Kim says, we are both knaves. When Jen says, we are both knights, she is claiming the logical statement, J and K. She is affirming both J and K are true at the same time. Kim, on the other hand, is denying both J and K at the same time. She says, not J and not K. Be careful here. Don't make the mistake that Kim is claiming, not J and K. That would simply be denying that they are not both knights, leaving the possibility that one of them is a knight and one of them is a knave. Since Kim is claiming that they are both knaves, she denies J, and she also denies K. Let's write out a truth table for this situation. As before, we want the blue columns to agree with each other. This means that Jen's identity and any statements she makes are logically consistent. Also, we want the orange columns to be consistent as well. This means that any statement Kim makes is consistent with her identity as a knight or a knave. Here we find that there is no possible solution. What we have described here is a logical paradox, a situation which has no logical interpretation, similar to someone saying, this statement is false. Here we can see that not every conceivable knight and knave problem will have a single solution. Some may have no solutions, others may have multiple solutions. Let's take a look at a final example. Here we'll have three islanders, Alice, Bob, and Carol. Alice says, Bob is a liar. Bob says, Carol is a liar. Carol says, Bob and I tell the truth. 
in this situation, since we have three islanders, we have eight different combinations of knight and knave. Again, we write out the truth table. We wish the first and fourth columns to agree with each other for Alice. We wish for the second and fifth columns to agree with each other for Bob. And we wish for the third and sixth columns to agree with each other for Carol. As you can see, only the sixth row is consistent, and our conclusion is that Alice and Carol are knaves, while Bob is the only knight. Now that we have some intuition for knight and knaves problems, let's take a look at the Anuki Yuke puzzle from Phantom Hourglass. It features six islanders. Do you think you can solve it? Here's a hint. With six islanders, there would normally be 64 possible combinations of knights and knaves. However, we can assume there is only one knave, so we can narrow things down to only six possibilities. Good luck. The solution is in the link in the description, and please remember to keep your comments spoiler-free.